newsletters.com right there. And then we're going to shuffle on over to newsletters. And right here, okay, second row, second row, first column is the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. This is a fantastic newsletter. He has a great portfolio going. He is uh, honestly just constantly paying attention to it and uh, really giving uh, some good insight on a lot of stuff. Of course, we always love uh, listening to him at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, and then we're going to go over to services as well. Now, what I think is, well, actually, we don't have to go to the services, right? But I will show you right here. The Basil Chapman live trading uh, webinar here, this is December 15th. But what I want to say going back on the newsletters is that when you become a subscriber to the opening call newsletter, you get access to a trove of these webinars that Basil only does for his newsletter subscribers. Okay, so you get access to those archives immediately. And when you're a subscriber, you get access to them when he starts doing them. And uh, he's, he's pretty good about having them pretty periodically. The last one was July 23rd. Um, and it was fantastic. It was sectors and stocks to focus on at the next phase of the market cycle. We are joined by Basil Chapman right now. Basil, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Jacob. How are you doing? I'm doing well. We're uh, taking everything in strides over here. So uh, I hope that everything works out well. And on Thursday, we say, oh, what a mess. But everything's you're all safe and everything works out well. Absolutely. Thank you, Basil. Well, what are we looking at right now? So we're looking at the Dow. This is the daily chart on the left. This is in the middle is the weekly chart. Uh -huh. And on the right is the monthly chart. And there are a bunch of techniques that I like to discuss. Um, but in the meantime, the most important one right now is that, uh, so for subscribers to the opening call, we've been long, uh, the latest uh, long the position that we have in the Dow is from the August uh, 5th of that, from the lows. And we've held that, we've had trading position, but we've got a core position there. And one of the things I look at, now this is the chart on the left. So I'll go through a couple of things that, that are very important. The MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, which kind of takes the shape of the chart that you follow, you can see this kind of M-shaped pattern has gone negative. The relative strength, this gray line here, is lower than it was uh, about uh, four weeks ago. The stochastic, which was very nice in the 95, 93% area, which I love over 80%, over 90% is really terrific. But once it starts to slide, you've got to be a little bit careful. So it's at 58%. Over 80%, as I say, is what you want to see. Over 90% is fabulous. And look, the weekly chart is still at 93%. So that's just saying intermediate term, I, I think that we're going higher and that there should be higher highs. And I'll talk just for a brief moment because we don't have a position here. But the QQQ uh, trading at uh, 489, this is the index 100, made a peak scene. And the Chapman Wave methodology, peak D is really what you're looking for. And I'll do this really quickly because I do this during my show. I do this live because it shows the technique in real time. You can't make things up when it's real time. So we were waiting for a peak D for the Chapman Wave buy signal to a buy mode to conclude to go to at least four higher peaks. And even the 10-minute chart, we just went to this leg D here. And you can see the technicals, the MACD stochastic on balance volume, that nine period over the 14, that's green. So those are the things that I look for. I'm just doing this very quickly. But in the Dow, look, the nine period moving average in the daily chart is still strong over the 14. But what I've been saying, oops, that's the QQQ. Let me just go back. There we are, it takes a second is still positive. But you can start to see that the rallies are starting to, to they're not as strong as they were. And I've been saying for about three weeks that I'm talking about this as if it's an, a high level consolidation. So there's a rotational correction going on. How it works out is going to be very important because key support now for the Dow, a close under 40, uh, 41,700 says, Oops, you're probably going to a sell signal on the daily chart. Weekly chart, there's that D. We're always looking for those Ds. It's got this technique that I call the inside track repellent zone. Look how many times it went into this little mini up channel and got repelled. This is the first time it's hugged that area. This is the third week. So I don't have any signal yet to, to – we do have an, uh, an insurance policy with one, one short position. But other than that, we've got longs. I'm still looking at this. As if to say, I don't have a signal to say to go short the Dow. It's it's holding very well, and if it goes, it closes above 42,628 um, in the daily chart. 
that's going to be really good because that will expand the nine period moving average over the 14. It'll only go pink, meaning the nine goes under the 14 if we start to go into the 41,600. That's what I'm thinking. So that's the one thing. Then, as you say, I've got a portfolio. I call it a portfolio, but it's positions that we have for subscribers. I like to have uh, triple digits, double digits, single digits because people come from all the, you know different. They have looking at positions on what they can afford or what they're ready for. Mm -hmm. So I have in all different uh, areas. So one of the things that we had been looking for for a long time, we are along the IAI, which is the uh, broker dealer ETF all the way back from 2020. Um, so we've got that core position, but I wanted to add to that. And recently we added in the 16s, we added to Robinhood market participation. Yep. I, I thought that this looked really good. So it's trading up about 50% now. It's at 25.75 in leg C. A very big move today. I'm not sure what the story is, but it's up 10% to 2.43. Yep. And it's only a leg C in the, uh, the weekly chart. And to me, it's important that I'm looking at a broker um, that is doing well because this is this means this is public participation. So all in all, I'm, I'm positive. Shorter term, I think there's a lot of whippiness that we're looking at. Um, if we can get through this week, I think that that'll be a good sign if we don't break down at any point. I think I think buyers are going to be forced to come in and maybe we have a bit of a run before the election. But uh, I'm looking at this so far positively, but the weekly, uh, the monthly charts are suggesting higher highs are still to come. Yeah, fantastic. And you know, what's interesting with Robinhood, especially right now, is you had obviously Barclays rose a target, you had a bunch of other analysts raise targets. Um, they're going to have some investor day, which in, in December, which a lot of people are hyped about. They believe they have a lot of new people coming in uh, using their platform as well. So there's a lot of um, really positive look on, on Robinhood as it is now. What a, what a great pick. So. We had waited a long time. You know, this hit 85 round number high back in uh, um, August of 2021 and then slumped down to the $6 area back in 2022. <laughs> so this is really the start of, a, of a, I think, a much bigger move in Robinhood looking out. Well, and I would say, too, you know, a lot of young, you know, I use, you know, thinkorswim, right, to trade. But so many young people like my age and, and, and certainly the generation below me, they only know how to trade with Robinhood. They don't know anything else. Yes. So certainly that's going to dominate uh, at least the market share going forward. And, and more entrants, especially younger ones, are going to know that's that's where they have to go to do it. Well, one of the reasons why I liked it is that I, I, I figured that this is these are the players that are in gold and be, these are the players that are in Bitcoin. So even though I, yeah. I've had since March, I've been saying, I think Bitcoin's making lower lows and lower highs. I think it's getting ready for a nice bounce in about another two, three weeks. I think it'll have a good rally. So maybe that will also help Robin Hood. Yeah, so I would love to hear more on that analysis at some point too, Basil, with uh, with Bitcoin. But thank you so much for coming on. It's, it's fantastic having you on every Tuesday. Thank you very much, Jacob. Have a, and good luck for tomorrow for all of you. Thank you, Basil. Take care. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back.